Great, Sally. Thank you so much. It's great to get to know you. Lovely to meet you too, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Yeah. First of all, what does health mean to you? Health means freedom to feel like yourself so you can pursue your passions and express joy, hope, and love and really be who you're meant to be. If you're sick, that really can break you at a very personal level. I agree. If you're sick, you just want to get well, right? That's your wish number one. For most people. Yeah. So how did your interest and passion for nutrition and the study of oxalates begin, Sally? As a very young child, I was medicated a lot with liquid liquid penicillin, which is a very ill-tasting. It's, it's traumatic for a little child to be fed penicillin. And I was barred from the swimming pool for swimmer's ear and things like this. And at age five, they took my tonsils out. And I found that to be very traumatic, being in the hospital and waking up in pain. And these experiences clearly emphasized health needed to be a priority. And before I even made it to kindergarten, and even in kindergarten as a little five-year-old, I was already really interested in nutrition and health. I always loved food. I was a, a big eater. And then in seventh grade, I was told through my science teacher that we really have a choice about whether we get chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer and so on. It's really about how we live and primarily what foods we choose to eat. And I was like, cool. Like if you don't have to be sick, so I decided then to study nutrition. So I've been interested in, in nutrition for the sake of health promotion and prevention since, you know, before puberty. And it wasn't, you know, in college at Cornell where I studied my nutrition, I remember very clearly learning about oxalates being considered an anti-nutrient that chelates calcium and lowers your calcium absorption for food. And back then in the 1980s, calcium was a big deal. And dairy foods were being very promoted because calcium is so important to health. And that's still true, but it's out of fashion now. But so then that was the only real concern other than all the kidney stone patients and kidney patients really should be taught a low oxalate diet. So I came out of school knowing that. I had no idea that oxalates mattered to everybody and that really even where it was in the food because it wasn't good information provided to us as students. And I worked in academia doing you know higher level things. So it wasn't until decades and decades and decades of health problems where it was a point where I was completely disabled that I had this insight that my arthritis problems were related to oxalate. And then when I got serious, thanks to the Volver Pain Foundation here in the US and North Carolina, there's a woman who's been testing foods for years nearly 30 years perhaps at this point. And she's been teaching about using, uh, avoiding oxalates in order to deal with pain and pelvic pain. And through, through her, I started to really learn more about where oxalates were in mm -hmm. foods. And lo and behold, a, a lifetime of health problems started just coming, unraveling. And I was completely floored to the point of recognizing that hardly anyone knows how much oxalate they're eating and hardly anyone can turn to any health professional and have someone point out the fact that your toxic high oxalate diet can create many different kinds of health problems. So what exactly are oxalates and, and why should we be cautious about them? It's a very small molecule. The parent compound is called oxalic acid. It's a two carbon, very small with four oxygens on it. And it, it has a charge, one or two negative charges that tends to grab positive charge ions of metals like calcium and other minerals. In nature, it forms calcium oxalate very easily. It is the principal ingredient in the typical kidney stone. You cannot make a kidney stone without oxalate. But the doctors usually call it a kidney or call it a calcium stone and forget to tell you that it's oxalate and that oxalate comes from your diet. So we get exposed to oxalate primarily through plants that make it and then we eat the plants that contain that oxalic acid and calcium oxalate crystals that they make. Also other things can turn into oxalate in the body. Vitamin C becomes oxalate in the body so that increases oxalate in the body. A certain amount of hydroxyproline which is an amino acid in connective tissue and, and collagen becomes oxalate. So your liver ends up making a little bit of oxalate. So you get a little oxalate from liver. It's a toxin that you would normally excrete through primarily through the urine, but other body fluids and tissues have to move it out. So it's dangerous because A, it takes calcium. B, it's quite inflammatory and causes oxidative stress. It messes up cell membranes and it starts causing all kinds of trouble way down in the cellular level it, at a level that we don't easily recognize or see, and the body does, often doesn't complain about it. Want to learn more about oxalates? Check out Sally K. Norton's full interview. And if you're curious, dive into the other episodes too. Don't forget to subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.